get to the Shah, you do the show, and then it finishes, the Cleopatra, and then what, what happens? Um, then the uh, Canadian government put in a policy um, that said, uh, if you invest in a movie, a Canadian movie, and it loses money, you can now um, claim, um, like, I don't know, if you put in $10,000 and it loses money, you can claim a percentage of the loss, so all of a sudden you've got a write-off of like $40,000, right? Mm -hmm. So they started to churn out these movies, these, these Canadian movies, and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people were brought up from the States, a lot of directors, a lot of American companies came up, and they went, uh, yeah, okay, well that's great, but we need black people. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I never thought I was going to have a, you know, a, a, any kind of film or television because, you know, Forest Rangers wasn't going to have me on it or, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, or any of that kind of or stuff. Beachcombers. Beachcombers, you know, yeah. that, that was never, not going to be work. So then, yeah, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. um, and you'd end up with a series like Night Heat mm -hmm. where, um, what, I played five different black guys all of whom died mm -hmm. you know I, I was you know I was a junkie I was a pimp I was you know all kind of street scum and I get I get dead in every episode right mm -hmm. and then they bring me back three weeks later because you know we all look close enough mm -hmm. um, so yeah but but all of a sudden that started to build a, a great resume in terms of my understanding mm -hmm. um, about about the craft right well here's the deal uh, when I was a child, I, and you know this, I'm going to bring it up again, mm -hmm. I loved, mm, all my family, my whole family loved a show called Bizarre. Oh, yes. And John Biner. Mm -hmm. John Biner and Super Dave Osborne. That's right. And you were on that show. I sure was. And you were the first Canadian person of color I ever saw on TV. Yeah. Ever. Doing some of the slimiest, most racist, disgusting jokes ever known. Horrible. They were so bad, but I would look forward to seeing you every fucking week. Yeah, every and, week. Dude. And yeah, and and for me, it was like, you know, my mama. My mama used to say, "You you have to eat a peck of dirt before you die," mm -hmm. and the peck for those of you who don't know the imperial system, mm. um, you, those bushel baskets that you get at the market in the fall, you know, and there's a bushel basket full of apples, mm. two and a half bushel baskets is a peck. Yeah. And she said, you got to eat that much dirt. So, you know, Bazaar was good money, but man, it was a lot of dirt you had to cram down they your throat. You, they made you pay for that money. Yeah, you you worked you worked hard, and it was a it was a it was a tough gig. Uh, you you had to be funny, or but not too funny, because if you were funnier than John Biner, you were never asked back on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, when they were doing do the Bigot Family, which was the sequence that you're talking about, they do uh, six episodes, and you go and you'd rehearse them for two days, and you go and do them in front of an audience, and you do all six episodes, and you just come out feeling slimed. <laughs> Slimed. It was. There was. In fact, there was one joke. I thought. I. I just said no, Dave. I'm sure. Dave. No, I cannot do that. I cannot do that. Can you say it or can you? No. Remember it? No. Okay. No. Never mind. Right. No. And I just went. I won't do it. Mm, good for you. And but that was the only one. Mm. I mean, you know, because it was good money and mm. and 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 all of that. And this was before buyouts, so you could end up getting double scale work. And right. I mean, financially, it was great. But it's. Took a toll on you. Yeah, it, it, it was awful, right?